Hey, it's Joe Glines from Automator, and this video you're going to see here in a minute is a conversation I'm having with Denilson Padilla. He's out of Brazil, and uh, he actually has an auto hockey channel as well. It's in Portuguese, so if you're a native Portuguese speaker, you're in luck. Right? I'll, I'll put the link uh, in the description of this video, uh, but he's doing some cool stuff, and um, he's actually doing some work for me as well, working on a couple of scripts that I gave him to, to do, and we decided, you know, I asked him to, to like attend our live Friday calls or whatever, and... He's just not that familiar. He doesn't speak English often, so we're practicing his English. And I said, hey, why don't we, when we're practicing, why don't we talk auto hockey stuff? And then maybe we can share it on our channel if it's relevant. And so we got into this pretty good conversation on using APIs. I was really happy to see he uses APIs. They're amazing, you know, that you can use. And we talked about uh, using, you know, using your developer tools versus Fiddler. I'm using different com objects and understanding the pros and cons about them. So uh, if you're new to APIs and want to just kind of listen in and pick up some of the tips and tricks, uh, it was a good conversation. I think we covered some other stuff as well. But uh, this one, oh, yeah, we talked about texting, automating texting in, uh, you know, push bullet and text magic are the two that I've done stuff with. Also, and he's going to give me an example of it, but using uh, Telegram's API, uh, he said, I don't remember if this was in the video or not. I think maybe it was later, but he said you can you can uh, have a script running and then have automate a message to you to say that, hey, your script is done or, or whatever you want, right? Um, you can do the same thing with Push Bullet as well. Uh, anyway, I thought you'd appreciate that. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. Please like it. It really helped me out. Thank you. Have a great day. Cheers. Okay, so Go ahead, Nick. let's see. So that endpoint looks good. So so to your point, let's... um. Well, now that I've saved this and exited, let me launch it and run, and nothing, I'm not getting any sort of a response. Let me, I'm going to double click the icon. Oh. Why is it? That seems weird. So, which is what you said, like, let's, let's put it right here. Let's see if this even has, actually, let, you know, here, here's the first thing I like to do is say, is, is object, right? If W is not an object, there's no chance of this working whatsoever. Oh, yeah. I never, never use this, this command. Yeah. Oh, so, well, see, See how it's a one? Yeah, it is uh, an object. Right. And if, if it came back as a zero, we got much bigger problems. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we'd be trying a bunch of other stuff, but it's like, it's it's not an object. You're never going to get it to work, you know, <laughs> the way you want it to. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, it is an object. So, that's good. And let's just we'll let it go past here. So, actually, it's already done. I'm surprised. Well, let's see if this actually, I don't think this is going to have anything, but let's see, um, let's change this to to this, right, and relaunch it. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's not, and so here's, here's is a good point. If for whatever reason, it's not, I mean, that's uh, oh. HTML, right? It's not, although the curly brace up here, it mm. maybe... So so let's do this. Let's change because I don't I don't remember what editor do you use. Like I'm uh, using AutoHotKey Studio. I, what do you use? Yeah, yeah. I like to use the. Um, I forgot the name. Um, site. Yeah, yeah. Site. Yeah. Site yeah, for Auto, Auto Hotkey. Yeah, yeah. I've used it, or I used to use it for a long time, and then. I got used to studio and I love, I love using studio. Um, oh, yeah, v VS code. It's, it's a good one. Sure. So I, so I there, forgot. There's something, there's something wrong because I don't remember he would return the, the full HTML. Yeah. Well, and it could be because I'm here in the U S right. Um, Oh, do, can you read this? What does that say? No access? Um, uh, yeah. 
It's like it's it's something like uh, Max Limit Richard. Huh. Okay. <laughs> so so actually, you try to run that's, it on your end. Weird. Run you run the same code. Let's see if it works for you. Yeah. But it it could. <laughs> My dog is. He's, I got people outside, so I can't put him outside. But he's just he needs a, he needs attention. Did you try to run it on your end? So, oh yeah. Uh, can you could you send me this? I don't know. Never. I just run what you gave me first. Yeah, yeah. Let me check here. I'm getting the same the same error. Okay. Maybe something has changed. Has changed. Right. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, it means that at least there's no issue. It's not, uh, you know, because sometimes they'll track like your IP address and see you're in another country and block access or whatever, right? So um, it sounds like it's just something there. So, yeah. The um, this parse JSON function it's not a class or, or if it is it's it's embedded inside of a function and because it's inside of a function i don't need to use the include which is one of the other reasons if you have it in the class that, well it's also in my library do you use your library yeah yeah you mean the the lib folder inside yeah. auto key folder well there's there's three yeah. places you know three lib folders on your computer that auto hotkey automatically searches Right. There's one oh, under yeah. under my documents. There's an auto hockey folder there, and there's an lib folder under that. And then in the local script you're running, there's an you know you can have one there. And then where auto hockey is installed, the active running script that you're doing, you know wherever auto hockey executable is under that one, and that's the one I use personally. But yeah, the, and it'll automatically search there, you know, for you. Yeah. That's awesome if you're using, you know, this com object. Yeah, okay, so, you know, there's another com object, the XML HTTP request. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, I know, but I never used. So let me give you a, a, a two, a 30-second quick understanding of it because it's it's good to know. Um, unfortunately, with IE dying, so let's, um, example, API calls, um, and here here's one. Here's, com, here's that. Com object. Yeah, this we MS have a lot XML. Of com, com connections. What's that? Like Excel? Like Excel? No. I... No, the, the name's really misleading. Are you looking at my screen? Just one moment. Are you looking at my screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so th this, you know, like the one up above you're using is here, right? This this is the one that I'm ta referring to. So the interesting thing about this one is it will automatically, if you have logged into a website with Internet Explorer, it will automatically borrow your cookies from your browser and use them. So you don't have to deal with logging in the crap, right, which is can be really helpful. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, mm -hmm. IE is dying, right? IE isn't, you can't go to a lot of websites with it anymore. 
So it's it's unfortunate because we can't use it anymore. You also you can't, there's a lot of things you you can't set like a lot of headers and you can't set other stuff, but it's it's taken care of for you. It actually borrows it from IE. So it's just good to know that the differences, right? Um, I have a video talking about the pros and cons of each one if you want to find that and watch it. But it's what's really cool. Like here, let me let me let me show you this one. Uh, so again, in this tool, API examples. So look, here's the template for connected to an IE window, right? So you can log in. Let's say you have a website where you can still log in with IE, right? So you log in with IE. This will actually connect to the active IE window and literally send your API request from your browser. So you can do stuff that like, and, and they will never know that you're doing com requests because it's tied to your browser, right? Like, so it's really yeah. cool. Yeah, really cool. Well, when you're- so That's see, the, the main difference. It's the main difference, I'd say, yeah. Uh, and, and here's the thing. Yeah. When I work with API calls, the actual API itself, if it's a public API, um, or, you know, if it's a public API, um, if they only have an OAuth 2 access instead of OAuth 1, I don't know if you know the difference between those, the, the OAuth 2 is no, just... I, I really don't know. Okay, well, here, at a high level, the um, OAuth 1, basically, they say... Hey, Denelson, here's your username and here's your password. Now, you have, well, I'm sorry. Um, here's your token, you know, and use it with your username. You still have to use it as credentials, but it's simple because you just pass it, which you, you, maybe you've done that. You pass it, you know, with uh, in your com object, which I can pull an example up if you want, but it um, as usually like a bearer token or something, right? But it's very simple because they give you your password, right? And it's easy. With the OAuth 2, it's designed much more to, let's say, you're creating an app and you're going to give it to people who have phones and the people have to use their phone to log in first and do stuff. So what happens is when we're programming it with AutoHotKey, we have to, we, we get a username and a token, right? They still give us that. We use that to connect to the server which then says, hey, you're Denelson, this is the right connection. Okay, let me send this back to you. They send you back a new password, right? And then you have to use that new password in your ongoing queries for that instance. And they time out, you know, often within a couple hours. So it's it's much more time consuming to build code to, to be able to use them. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, and it's also, they come up with, everyone does them differently. And they'll have it it's just really hard to for me i mean i think for you know people who are actual programmers and have programmed for several years it's probably not hard but they they make these things of like oh take the timestamp from this euclidean to whatever you know or what's it called epoxy not epoxy um but there's a certain time format right that you have to use and also just lots of stuff where you're like uh, you know, it's it's so confusing that I finally usually just give up. So my point is, hey, if you can use the XML HTTP request to to use your browser to log in, and then you use the XML, it can save you all that headache that I'm talking about. So sometimes it's really helpful. Yeah, that's very useful. It saves a lot of time. Yep. yep. And what's cool, have you used Fiddler? Sorry? Have you used Fiddler, the program Fiddler? I didn't didn't get Fiddler. Fiddler. It's a program. When you all right, let me I'm still sharing my screen, right? Or no? Yeah. yeah. When whenever you go, you and I'm sure you know this part, right? When you go, let me think of all right, I'm gonna uh, actually hold on. So is it a uh, control shift I, I think? There we go. So maybe maybe this is what you do right now, right? Is you'll look at your, here's my network tab. I'm going to click this. Yeah. 
and I'm going to see my network traffic, right? So this, if I want to look just at the, um, like the real, the main um, API calls, um, I can use Chrome's inspector tool to look at my traffic, right? Right. Um, somewhere in here, here we go. Maybe this is a better, well, Maybe that's not a good one. Let, let's go to a. Um, let's try the auto hockey documentation. You you can use you can use the the four devs website uh, for for example. So that's what I've done to to make the script the same as you you are showing. Maybe you, we can we can fix. <laughs> yeah, at least we can see what's going on. So it's interesting. Is <laughs> right now it's not. It looks like it's not even loading for me. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's why because um, the website is only until yeah, yeah, exactly. Then you go to um, so there weren't any yeah. oh over so here go somewhere. To, yeah yeah you need to select a link to to generate something um, the one that I used was um, let me send, send you the the link. Um, this one here, I sent you. Yeah, I see it. So you, you, you check mark the, the genre. The first question is the German. Second one, the the eight. Um, state. Whatever. Um, the last one is is op optional. You you don't you don't need to to select. Optional. Okay. Hey, maybe maybe that's the the problem. The the last time, uh, there wasn't the, this this option. Oh, okay. It's so, optional, you know. I think that's the problem. It does say option. Um, now you, uh, you need to generate. I think that there is a there is a button. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so let me let me clear. But FYI, this XHR, that is actually the XML HTTP request that I was mentioning. Let me go ahead. So, so here, right? This is this is the JSON that was returned, right? Yeah. Uh, and we can. Oh, I thought that would actually display it here. Um, usually, it'll, it'll open up and show you. Oh, okay. We can see the headers. Oh right? uh, yeah. Post. So now. If you get used to this, it's not it's not bad at all, right? But let me show you. I use Fiddler, and I'm I'm gonna launch it and bring it over here. So Fiddler, um, the and the other thing that's really cool, I'll let me explain it in a minute here. So so it looks at your traffic. So I'm gonna I'm gonna reload this, and in here we'll see the traffic, right? Um, and I can click here, and I can double click it, and I basically see the same stuff that you saw in Chrome inspection tools, right? Um, up here, this is the request. Below 
um, after I click something will be the response. So if we look at like this, or let's say the raw, um, this is the response. So this is the request. This is what came back. Okay. Okay. What's really cool is there's a couple things is I can say, Hey, you know what? I want to try to recreate this. So I'm going to drag this into composer in here. Now notice here it says Chrome, right? This was the process was Chrome. I'm going to yeah. hit execute. Now see how it says Fiddler. So Fiddler, not Chrome, Fiddler did this call, right? And then I can come in here and I can say, hey, you know what? Let me, um, actually, sorry, let me go back to the composer and go the raw there. I can change here. I could type something different if I wanted to, right? If I wanted to change this to one, whatever, right? And then I can re-execute it and see what happens. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Um, now, what's really cool is is I actually have a Fiddler Ripper, so um, I can hit a but I can highlight this and hit a button, and it takes this and converts it to Auto Hotkey code for me, right? So, like, it's like, bam! Now I have my Auto Hotkey code for doing that same API call. I don't have to try to adapt it, right? Um, but what's really really cool is if we come back into here. Let me get rid of everything except for here. And hopefully it's in, it should be in my template. Oh, I don't, I don't, I'm surprised. I don't have it in my template, but I have it, you know, as an option. So um, I'm going to go like this and say set options, Fiddler. So now... This, this is what you need to add, and of course, you adapt this to whatever your, your proxy is um, in Fiddler. When I run the call from Auto Hotkey, it'll show up in Fiddler, right? So then I can say, here's exactly what my browser did. Here's what I did in Auto Hotkey. Hey, what's different, right? Like when it doesn't work, it's easy for me to track down of like, you know, crap, I still need to, you know, change this thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because oh. otherwise, you're just guessing when you're trying to fix stuff. You okay. know what I mean? And you're like, yeah, because you can't see your auto hockey traffic in Chrome, in Chrome's, you know, network tool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and this allows you to see it no matter, you know, like whatever. So it's, it's very handy in that sense. Uh, but you can also, in here, you can click... Uh, web view. So this gives you like a, a visual of what, you know, what was actually done. But like I said, you can see if they're returning JSON um, or XML, but it's not apparently. So, so that's why also when we were trying to parse it, right, it was, it was breaking because it's not either of those. Um, it's just straight up uh, HTML on whatever's wrong with it. But let's see. Yeah. Um, now, did uh? Oh, there we go. So let's let's go back now. Let's let's go into here. Did this actually? Um, work. Oh, is this the information? Yeah. Uh, the, um, they are uh, fake fake data, like rainbow data. Yeah, random. So let's go into Fiddler and look at that last one. And hopefully, oh, so see here the JSON? Oh, yeah. Right? And, and that's what we saw. It's nice of them to, to let you see that, right? This is the formatted, and here's just the JSON, right? But in, in Fiddler, we can see that as well, right? And um, it allows us to look around and stuff on it. But like I said, we can say, hey, let's, let's drag this into Composer. Um, so it was the post and let's do this. So, okay, let me find, um, auto hotkey Fiddler Ripper. And so I think my hotkey is, oh. I don't, I, Thank you. 
Let me let me look at um I don't remember what my hotkey is in the fiddler ripper. Oh it's Fiddler converter. Okay, that this is the one. Oh, control G. Okay. So I think this was the was this the right one? Control G. Yeah, it, unfortunately it's got oh, but here we go. So it has a has a little, you know, it's not perfect. But here's my auto hotkey code. Now let's take this and bring it into auto hotkey and let's see if it'll run. You probably know this, a lot of times you can, you don't need all of these headers. Yeah, most most of them. Yeah, so it's having a problem with um, uh, variable. Yeah, but which, where was that? Which you, line? Line four. Huh. Yeah, that's not a surprise. Um, uh, I hate, I hate this. I think do we have to. Well, let's. I we, think there isn't this 3D. Yeah, that, it's that is just a um, U, uh, URI encoded, you know, value. Oh, is my guess. Oh, I think that's supposed to be. I I, I don't do this often enough. <laughs> yeah. So is it? it? Should be working. Okay, that that worked. Let's see if it. Ah, look at that. So this this is this is a good sign. We got a two hundred, right? You know what that is, right? That means it was success, yeah. right? Um, success. Yep. So. Let's take a look. That was the headers, so but let's now um why huh? Response text. Yeah. Debug. Is that the that yeah, that's the right um I'm surprised I didn't notice anything. It should have been populating this. Let's let's see in a message box, this should be something. Unless it's, no, it's not an object. We didn't load it as an object. Yeah. Yeah, for whatever reason, that's blank. Um, although, oh. sometimes that is blank and you have to grab it from something else and I forget what that is. Um, I've run into that before where they return, because it was a post request, right? So. Yeah. That's weird. Well, what we can do, so here's another great thing, right? Is so see this, like I said, this is this since this is here in Fiddler, if we look, so see this auto hotkey? So here we should be able to look at the raw and what's coming back. So it looks like there's Oh, wait. Yeah, I don't see. Maybe, maybe this isn't correct that the payload that we sent. But we can we can come up here and look at what was actually sent. So that's the payload. That was sent. Um, and what we could do is compare this to where, where did I borrow it from? Um, mm, post? This is, oh, this is the one. Yeah. And, and that does look quite a different. We look up here. Yeah. So we would have to look, you know, line by line at what 
what is wrong with um I don't you know I don't know if mine my script does a good job on post requests. I've never studied if it if it does a good job of getting uh that payload. Oh, there's the payload. Um I'm eyeballing it. That looks right. Yeah. But I, what I don't understand is why is this all blank? Up up here, it should have a, a lot more than just, you know. Oh, that's the web forms. Excuse me. Let's look at the raw. There we go. So, all right. I wish there were. Oh, all right. Let's move this over more. Post, post, got that right. Keep alive. Post is right. Keep alive. I don't, not that it would matter, but I don't see that on the left. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's different. Yeah. So it missed, my script missed a couple things, right? But you get the idea of this can yeah. be help save a lot of time, you know, in adapting. But in Fiddler, it, it takes a little getting used to, but once you get used to it, it's it's pretty cool. They have an online version, but you have to pay for it, the Fiddler online version. Very so, yeah. interesting. If you go to... Uh... Actually, we have that Dropbox thing. I'll, I'll, let me... Um... Oh, crap. Oh, here we go. So let me edit, and then I'll open the folder. Do you have two screens? Uh, three. But I really... <laughs> yeah, once you get used to it, it's hard to not have them. Oh, look at that. I can see that right there. Is It's, it's triple quote. Oh, is that why? Because there were some... No. Now that I, I look at it, let's go back into... Yeah. What? Why are these... There was no reason for that to have been triple quoted. Now, I guess we'd have to really look at... Yeah, I mean, that, I don't know... Well, I guess we can look in Fiddler, right? Um, yeah, I don't see a reason. And what's cool is I can just come in here and copy from it. Um, the other one, which, and I forget what it is, maybe I've accounted for it, but one of these three, like the deflate, BR, one of them auto hockey doesn't have, and it will break stuff. Let me let me comment that out. Deflate. Oh, it doesn't like. Uh, oh, because it. The, yeah. All right. All right. The virgin. You know, I'm just gonna. Com I'm gonna comment that out. Still blank. Still blank. That's weird. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Especially to be blank. I'm not used to it being blank. Blank and returning 200, like, right. successful? Uh, yeah, no, I 100% agree. It's a really good point of that. That does not make sense at all. Now here, let's, let's cheat. This is what... Because I'm 
lazy when it comes to programming. Um, so I do with, with version one, you can get away with this. You see how to do that? Session. Yeah, what's this? <laughs> it, I, it, I'm just abbreviating what this is right here. Um, but oh. <laughs> yeah. if, if you have double quotes in your text, see how I did a equals instead of colon equals? Like here, a better way to solve, show you this is just say, so see how, see the double quotes are in here? Yeah. I don't have to add the double double quotes everywhere. Yeah, it's better. Right, it, it it's yeah. just a quick, easy way to deal with it. Well, that didn't fix it. I was hoping that was you know, um, but that that should be fine. Yeah, so we'd have to you know dig around a bit more. Um, like I said, this one, I don't remember. It's either the deflate or the br. It's one of the two. But I doubt that that is what the issue is. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't, that didn't make any difference. Oh, was there? Hold on, hold on. Let's make sure here. Um, in he uh, fiddler. No, it's just going to that, and there's no there's no query string. Uh, let's look at that is the raw. Okay, there's nothing else there. So the payload has everything, and it's not. Um, there's nothing on the the query string, you know, appended to. Often there'll be something after this, but because in a post request, you, it yeah. doesn't it doesn't need it. Yeah, this we should be able to take this, I, I think, and and just do like a search on. URL in code. Um, what I wanted, and I should have done a decode. So this is this is what it's it oh. is original. Oh yeah. So the 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 first one is encoded. Right. Right. So that's why it adds some some letters and numbers. Right. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah, because there's illegal for HTTP protocol. The like equals or the 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 right paren, you know, like like this or curly braces and stuff. It can't handle them, so it needs the like a space. I think I think that might be it. No, but yeah. You, you well, what kind of of encoded is this? It's uh. Space are, or? Yes, HTTP protocol is my understanding. If I you know, I'm curious if we shove this in here without encoding it. Which shouldn't work, but um, it's worth a try. Where? Oh, that's the payload, right? Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> what? So, that... so whatever we did up here was, you know, I did something wrong somewhere or whatever, but um. So now we can come down here and take this response and we can parse. Yeah, unfortunately, I oh, there it is. It's still here. Good. Um, and so and let's just comment this out. So, so there we go. So it shoves it into an object, right? 
And so each one of these is the the values in the auto hotkey object, which is, you know, I love how simple it is when you get JSON to, to dump it into an auto hotkey object. And then it's just, for me, very easy to understand. Yeah. I never used this this parse JSON. I I used load load met method. I used I to as well. Difference. Yeah. Um, I think there's a little bit of speed benefit to this one, but for me, it's also the fact that it's just a function, and I don't have to um, use a clap. Make sure I use an include, and it's just simpler. Oh, exactly. So we have a progress. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then, and like I said, so um, in Fiddler, we can go back and see, yeah, when, now again, this is auto hotkey doing it. Hey, we see all the same stuff, right? It's, I love being able to see, you know, what, when Chrome does it and then when I do it, right? And go, well, wait a minute, what, you know, what's the difference? And it helps you spot what's breaking. Yeah. But what I typically do is I first use the browser to do it with the GUI, and, and I have Fiddler open. And then I come into Fiddler, and like I said, I, I can even do it from here. I drag this into Composer, and then I can manually change, you know, some of these values, right? Like, I, I, let's see, it'd be in here, I guess, right? One of these, let's say we want to make that a one. I don't know if that, or, or let's make this one a zero, right? So I'm going to say zero and hit execute, and I can test that and see what comes oh. back, right? And if that works, then I say, okay, it looks like I can change things and it's not going to break everything. So then I start working it out a hotkey, right, to programmatically do it instead of, you know, it just saves me a crap load of time. Yeah, I understand. That's that's um very cool that you're working with these because it to me it's it's one of my passions or loves of uh, like there's so many APIs out there web services you can connect to and you know programmatically get stuff it's it's such a great way instead of I used to do a lot of web scraping and it it can it can be nice but yeah. it, man it's it's a lot more data it's much slower it's it's much it, things change the web pages change. And with API calls, usually doesn't happen, right? They don't they don't change all the time. Yeah, I'll be using this this program in my next API scripts. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's I have a couple videos on talking a bit more about it, right? Of, of how to use it and stuff. But it's uh, you can also you can apply filters. So because sometimes you have a lot of other stuff going on, and the, I don't love them in here, but this filters button, you can, so I'm using filters and see, see all of these. Um, I've yeah. set up a bunch of stuff to exclude traffic that doesn't automate. So that way I can focus, or I could just say only show traffic from, you know, a given URL, right? Or, or this is, sorry, this is a, a program, but um, you can, you can say, here we go. If URL contains, right. And then it, it'll only show, so again, if you have like Zoom open or other stuff open, you don't see all your traffic, which can be really confusing. What, what, I, oh, yeah. what I don't like is you can say actions um, run, so you have to run it. Well, after you, if it's on when you do your API call, it'll apply them. But if, um, if it's not on, you have to remember to come up to actions and say run filter set. But what, and Isaiah and I, Raptor X, the one thing, and I agree with him, it, it's just, when you run the filter set, it literally deletes the other traffic. It doesn't just filter it and hide it like a filter normally does. So it's the uh, the online version works like a filter. It just hides it, and then you can turn it off and re-see it. But, um, again, they switched that one to where it costs money to use, and so I'm sticking with this one just because, you know, it, it does what I want and... It, uh, it, it, it's just the filters are a little weird, but they are, I still use them because, boy, it, it it's a great way to focus on just your traffic instead of everything that you're doing on your computer. 
So does the the filter is, is, is speeds up the the script? No, no. It just it speeds up your code development. Like here, like see, um, Discord dot com. You know what Discord is, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I use. Discord. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I I'm you know I just downloaded it the other day and I'm like, all right, someone I'm working with also uses it. But um, so let's say I need to end in a semicolon, so I'm going to do that, and then star dot discord dot com, and I'm going to run the filters. Run filter set now. Okay, that didn't seem to work. I would ask Oh, maybe I don't need the dot. Oh, there it goes. So see how that cleared? And actually, I don't know why Facebook, I thought I had Facebook in here. How is that not in here? All right. Um, so... Actually, I don't even know what this is. See, this. Um, so <laughs> it's just a way to help you focus. Star. B i s q u s c d n dot com. So it'll help you focus on your work instead of having other traffic that you have to kind of look oh, around. Right now, I got it. Yeah, it's not that it helps. With any other thing other than just helps you really get to look at what you're trying to do, right? And I turn them on, and that's the other thing that's a it's a great is uh you'll turn them on and then you you do other stuff and you relaunch it, the filters stay on if you left them on. So you do all this work and then you close fiddler and you go away and you come back for another project, but you forget you turn on filters to only limit like the stuff for the one site. And you're like, why is none of this coming up, right? And it's because in the <laughs> filters, which are kind of hidden, you don't have a visual to say, hey, you have filters on. Um, the other thing you can do is you can come down here and say uh, you can limit it to like a browser, you know, just to browsers or non-browsers. Um, and you can also just tell it to stop capturing, which is convenient. I could say, you know, but if I did browsers, I wouldn't see my auto hotkey traffic, right? But it would also hide oh, a lot of other yeah. crap you know, that, that I don't want to see. But yeah, I wish, I yeah, I just wish the filters were done just a little differently. Uh, and then control X will clear that screen. Um, I might have actually written a hotkey for that. I don't remove. Oh, no. All sessions, okay, yeah, control X. And that's what's weird is it's it's not copy, or no, wait, it is, yeah, it's not copying. So that is, yeah, it, uh, it just deletes it. It's not cutting, excuse me. It doesn't cut and put it to your clipboard. It deletes it. You would think control X on every other program you've ever used is a cut, and, it, you know, it, it, it will copy it in the process. This just deletes it. Oh. Uh. Is this Fiddler program like uh, Wireshark? It is. It's actually a, it, in the sense of they both look at your network traffic. However, unless you want to give me a tutorial, Wireshark, like for the love of God, it has so much in it. You know what I mean? It's so complex. And Fiddler seems to give me really what I need to see, you know, very quickly. And Wireshark... You know, it's it's just it's very complex. It's very complex. Yeah, one hundred percent agree. That's why I and I've had someone give me a tutorial, and I'm like, oh my god! You know, it's just on every little thing. It's so complex, and it and it does more, right? Don't get me wrong. It's not it's not that it's bad. It's just like I'm, you know, it does so much more. It's kind of like the IWB two learner tool. People say, hey, I can look at the developer tools, and I can see all the stuff that's in IBW two. But with IBW2, it's so e it limits, you know, to what you're being yeah. seen, to, to what you really need to see. And I'm like, that's why I like that tool is I, I don't have to see all this other crap. Yeah, you can't you can't compare. 
Yeah. Okay, and then this is a free tool. Um, let me see. Well, actually, I'm, I'm curious if there's no up to date help. It's it's an op- open source. No, it's from a um, it's from a company. This Telerac. Here we go. Oh. I'll put the link in the chat here. But I, I've been using it for a long time, and it's you know it's a very it's a, uh, steady tool. What um in on that example with the Dev Four, um, did you do you know the difference between a public API and a um, well, a non-public? I don't know what to call the other one. <laughs> some of them, some of the APIs have a whole developer, you know, uh, documentation section on how to use their API. Yeah. Right. And so th- this isn't an official API, okay. you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, just making sure you under, you knew that there are some that are public that are built for you know for people to borrow. Yeah, yeah, and then and then we can kind of hack it just because every browser call is an API call, right? So so we can we can fake it and get a lot of the stuff. But um, there's a website. Do you know um, Rapid API? Yeah. I think yeah. it's the best free website or, you know, you can pay for a user. A lot of cool APIs. You can even find less, uh, like Google Translate API. I think the YouTube, I, I, I'm not sure. There's another one. I'll have to look in a... In the, the, you know, we did, I think we did two webinars on APIs. Maybe it was just one, but, um, I mentioned a website, uh, in it and it had, it's, it's similar to rapid API in that it lists, you know, over 17,000 APIs that are out there. Uh, and, but it, it, I agree. It hasn't, it doesn't seem like it's been updated as much as rapid API has lately. Yeah. But yeah, APIs are just so amazing to me. Do you know uh, a way to use like Google Translate API for for free? Not for free, no. I mean, I, I know you can imitate the the web page loading of it, right? And so you can do it for free, but that's I don't know about using. The, I mean, I've used the Google Translate API a fair amount, and I've never been charged. Um, it, their thresholds are pretty high, you know, for the translation. <laughs> yeah. So, have you did you have you seen our the webinar we did on APIs? Um, no, no, no never, never seen. Okay, it, it's a. I thought it was a really good one. You know, a, a fun, interesting one. Um, this is where it's so on my API page. Um, you can get the links to the, the API syntax writer um, and the, the Fiddler Ripper. This is the Ripper for the cloud version of Fiddler. So if you're not using that, just get this one. And then uh, yeah. web service. Let's see if no, that's not, let me see. That's not, that's not it. I thought I had a link to um, this, this where I grabbed this. Oh, here we go. Programmable web. There we go. This is the place that, that I used to use predominantly for finding APIs. Um, but like I said, this hasn't, you know, this they haven't updated this graph in forever, which is unfortunate. Um, but when you look at the, uh, oh, oh, wow. Oh, actually, did you see that? So they have over 24,458, you know, APIs in here. Well, that's a lot. So you can just search for something, and it's it's very similar to Rapid API in that sense of, you know, it's it's like a phone book, 
right? Where you can, they'll list, you know, different ones um, and information about them. So I would say, you know, use both. That's a good one as well. Yeah. Here's the overall. And let me give you. I'll just give you the link to this okay. one. Yeah. If you, if you can send me the link. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I've used the Rapid API, and I, and I have actually like a couple where I've signed on. I'm not paying, you know, because I because I also use it so little. But um, well, my API. That's where we go. I forget which ones. I think it was like a phone number lookup or address lookup. Oh, oh, I did pay a whole bunch of money. $2.40. Um, I thought this would list where my, because they tell you, you have to sign off on which ones you want to use, right? Have access to. Yeah, it's uh, it's been long since I don't use any API from from Rapid API. Oh, maybe my APIs means means you can even create your own API. Well, I think that's what they mean by my APIs. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's you can spend weeks you know, looking at just what's out there, right? It's it's ridiculous. But yeah, it's uh it's just fascinating to me that what's what's available. Um I've done so I'll show you here is my folder with APIs I've worked with. Right, so these are different APIs that work, but then some of them, like Google, um, has you know a bunch under each one, so it's not even the full list of you know. I've I've worked with a lot of APIs. <laughs> All these folders are just APIs. Yeah, everything in here is API calls. Yeah, yeah. Each one of these is a kind of think of as an endpoint for the most part, but but like I said, some but some of them like Google and maybe like Yahoo or something are nested because they offer many APIs. Yeah, tons of API. Yeah, yeah. So I've 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 APIs are really like my strong point out of stuff I've done. You know, if I'm an expert in anything, which I'm not. Um, APIs, but at least I'm close. I can kind of hold my own, you know, this stuff. Yeah. I think People Data Labs, that one had, oh no, it was Clear, Clearbit had some really good stuff. Actually, People Data Labs was good. Um, Clearbit has a lot of really interesting stuff where you can look up um, prospects and businesses and you can look up any logo for any company um, for free. It's a really cool one. Oh. Well. That's interesting. Yeah. Onboard API, that was another, I think, um, looking for people, if I remember right. But I had some that I'm like, you can look, you can take, give them images, and they'll tell you if there's naked people. Like, you know, they, they do a, a measure on the image and say how much flesh kind of like is on the thing. Uh, Dun and Bradstreet is another great one. Although, well, their data is amazing, but their API was shit when I tried it. A lo- you know, a long, <laughs> obviously a long time ago, right? Um, yeah. But it was so confusing and nothing was documented. And I kind of got it to work by just guessing at a bunch of shit. And uh, it just, it was a big time sink. But um, they have such good data. It, it really made me wish, like, it, if I still worked in market research, I'd be all over it using it. Oh. it you ever use curl for your API calls? Um, curl. Um, never actually used. I just, I think I just used some some commands in, like, Linux commands. 
Mm -hmm. So I'm sure, I'm sure you're aware when, when you, when you have a public API and you're like, awesome. Hey, okay. I can go here. And then they, they never have like an auto hotkey or an HTTP, you know, example. You know what I mean? They have a Python example, a Ruby example, a curl yeah. example, like almost always curl. And so, um, I started to say, hey, okay, in this file, I'm going to have in curl, you know, this is what they ask for, and here's what I need in auto hotkey in order to do, you know, the above. Uh, so that way, when I had a curl example, I could understand what I had to do in auto hotkey. But yeah, exactly. But um, Raptor X, and it was from like 10 years ago, he wrote a curl script for auto hotkey that you can interact with and send it. It just uses auto. It doesn't use the HTTP request object like we're used to. It uses curl. So it takes your stuff, puts it in the curl and sends it. And he's like, well, we can, you know, I can do all this with curl. And I'm like, well, I, I you know, I, I said, you know, to me, I'd rather not do it in curl, but Hey, what do I care? Right? Like as long as it works. Um, but okay. I, I never looked into it more, but yeah, it's, it's a, uh, it's pretty cool. Mm, have you worked with um, Telegram API? No, um, I haven't. But oh, and I don't even have it here. Uh, but it did. You let me see here if it's still at the top of my post. It, it, it's uh, it's a great API. So I I was actually interested. So that's why I have it bookmarked right on the top of my page. Because have so have you played with it? Sounds like it. So yeah, I, I've used this. This this topic, because um, cool. um, I'm using Telegram. Can use, yeah, go yeah, ahead. You can use Telegram API to like to send you a message. For example, when a script is done, it's finished. Oh, it's cool. cool! Nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, but as you get more and more friends on Telegram, you could use it to automate messaging your friends. Right and and see if they reply. So basically, build your own interface. Yeah. Um, I I use uh, Push Bullet, and the nice thing about Push Bullet is it can automate sending text through your phone. And so I have a tool that we've written that automates sending text. It does a mail merge basically with like your name or city, whatever into the text going to people. And uh, it's, it's pretty cool. I use that a lot. It made some good money with it too, which is awesome. <laughs> and then we used when, it, uh, let's see, where's text magic is another one. They, they're similar to Push Bullet, but they have their own um, Push Bullet literally sends the SMS text through your Android phone, so you see it in your outgoing messages. Text Magic, did I say Push Bullet? I think, I hope. Text Magic is different in that they you install an app on your phone, so it can be on an iPhone or an Android phone, and then with their API calls, you can send the text, and it it doesn't go through your messages. It goes through the app on your phone, if that makes sense. Or let me let me rephrase that. It actually goes through the servers, but you can see the text on your phone inside the app, not in your normal messages, and um, which has its pros and cons, right? But it's uh, it's cool because you can send a lot of messages, and then people don't know your actual phone number. You know what I mean? So for a business, <laughs> it's it's much nicer to to be using it. Yeah. I would take a look at this text magic. Mm -hmm. Is it for free? No. Well, the, the tool is. Well, no. There's there's like a... The, I mean, the tool is free. You can download it and play with it. Um, they also, by the way... And actually, let me see if I still have it installed. Yeah, let me launch it. Um, they, they give you a, a very robust program, which... Is gonna it wants to, let's see if I can skip this for now. Oh, and it wants me to log in. I don't know. It's been a while since I've done this, so
Uh, I don't know my own. Anyway, they, they give you a downloadable program that you can have running on your computer and do a lot of the stuff that you don't even need to be a programmer for, right? And it still gets, it automates. You can do like a mail merge with the first name. And, and so for people who aren't programmers, it's, it's a great tool. Oh. Um, we built our own, Maestruth and I, because I wanted to do a bit more stuff than what they were, um, what they allow. What? Hold on a second. I don't think this would matter, but I don't care that you see it. It's uh, that if we ever shared this, I don't necessarily need this <laughs> being, you know, visible for everybody. So, Joe, could you, could you send me all, all these um, free APIs that, that does something like um, send message or SMS or, you know, send to Android phones? Like this, you, you've mentioned text magic and push, push bullet. bullet. Yeah. Um, well, the... Uh, the um like i said the text magic you're paying you know it's 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 like four cents per message if it's under 62 characters or whatever uh, this is their this is their gui that i was mentioning and it can have my list of contacts which i don't even know if i still have oh so i have these are different lists of contacts um but this is their gui and what's cool is i can say message um hello insert tag, uh, first name. So see how with my contacts, it would pipe in their first name. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Right, so it's like I said, even if you're not a programmer, it's pretty easy to use. Um, Maestria built a GUI that actually does something similar to this, not quite as good, but it's still, it's pretty good. But yeah, um, now push bullet, it's free for the first 40, I forget how many messages per month. Um, but no then worries. after, what's that? I would take a look. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a, a, there's a max you can do in push bullet per month. And then you have to, I paid, well, what I, I pay like $40 a year and I can use it as much as I want. Oh, it's worth. <laughs> well, the other really cool thing about push bullet is you can, let me let me actually. I haven't. I, I changed my phone just the other day. Um, let me see if this is going to work. Let me let me test something real quick here. Okay. If it works, I'll show you. It's it's just so cool. No, so because I haven't updated Push Bullet to use this phone, but what you can do is I can I can be on my phone and I can hit. I can highlight something and hit copy, and then on my computer I can paste, or vice versa. I can be on my computer and copy and then paste in my phone. Oh, I can do this and uh, na native with um, um, the Windows 10 your phone okay. app. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a uh, which, I, and even then I have that. Actually, I don't, is that running right now? Because I use that as well, which is what a terrible freaking name, your phone, right? Like, why isn't it my phone, if anything? But it's just so stupid. Um, oh, that's hilarious. I don't know why, and I can't, for whatever reason, let me, I can't, I can't drag it over here. But I just launched it, even though I used it yesterday. And for some reason right now, it's saying, hey, turn this on. Um, I don't get it, but let me turn it on. Yeah. So yeah, I've, and and I have, I did, what, there we go. I did set it up. This one's set up on my new phone. Oh, yeah. This was my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Looks like a burrito. It was uh, enchiladas and some veggies. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> here's here's my new TV. It's it, it's hard to describe how big it is. It's enormous. 
so it is big. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. So with your phone, I I tried. I didn't. I don't know if you've tried looking. I, there's no com object. There's no nothing that I can find to connect to it because that was my you know like hey why can't I connect to this program and automate it you know programmatically. Yeah. You would think you'd be able to, but um, I haven't found a com. I mean, there's got to be, but I, it's it's this. Yeah, it's so annoying. So, Joe, would you would you mind to we we continue our talking next week? Yeah, no problem. I was, <laughs> I was actually just looking at the time going. I got a. I have a. I have a call this evening. Um, let me let me hit stop here. Hold on. <laughs> relevant. Oh, let me... So Danny, just you later uh, send me if you want by Telegram the the websites or I think the API. Um, there. Is.